Hi everyone, Dr. Biology here. This video is related to AQA GCSE Biology, Ecology, and I'm going to be looking at plant adaptations. I'm also going to be looking at some exam questions and help you with your exam technique. Okay, so here is a quick spec check. So this is the specification and you'll see that you need to learn about how organisms are adapted to living in their natural environments and about uh, learning about the different features that enable them to survive the conditions in which they normally live. So this is three things, three types of adaptation, structural, behavioural or, or functional. Um, so I've already talked about animal adaptations in a previous video, so I'm going to just concentrate on plant adaptations. So the first type of adaptation is structural adaptation. So this is the physical features that allow an organism to successfully compete. So I've got three examples here, but the first one I'm going to talk about is colouring that may provide camouflage. So the first example I've got here is this one, so I'll just uh, highlight this. This is Corydalis hemidecentra, and it lives in southwest China. And you, as you can see from it, it's very, very camouflaged. Um, it's got what we call disruptive coloration, so it blends in with the background. So that means it's um, likely to not be eaten by any herbivores. This one here, they're called lithops or stone plants or pebble plants and they're found in parts of South Africa. Um, and as you can see, there's different colorations, but they um, obviously look like stones and therefore are camouflaged from being eaten by herbivores. Another structural adaptation is a large or small surface area to volume ratio. So in the example I have here is a cactus and they have spines and that basically reduces the surface area um, to the volume. So therefore um, what's happening is that uh, they'll limit the loss of water. Other adaptations are that they've got swollen stems, that's because they are storing water. They also have very deep and sh uh, deep roots and shallow roots as well. For if, When it rains, it tends to rain quite heavily. Plants also have behavioural adaptations, so this is the behaviour of an organism that gives it an advantage. Now, the most common one for all plants that uh, grow via photosynthesis through chlorophyll and chloroplasts is they grow towards the light. So therefore they have hormones called auxins um, that actually allow the plants to move towards light and obviously that's an advantage because that will increase their growth rates due to increased photosynthesis. They also can catch prey, so for example here is a common uh, plant you might have seen before which is the Venus flycatcher and it has little tiny little hairs inside and when a um, fly or a midge or anything comes in they get stuck in those hairs so they can't move upwards because the hairs are pointing downwards and then the actual uh, Venus flycatcher wants it will close its petals or leaves and trap the fly, uh, the fly inside and then slowly digest the material. And the third type of adaptation, functional adaptation. So adaptations related to processes that allow an organism to survive. So a key one there for plants is photosynthesis. So that is a process that allows growth. Uh, second one here is production of poisons or venom to deter predators. Well, plants don't produce venom, but they will produce poisons. For example, the larch tree um, and many other types of plants that produce berries that are poisonous to um, herbivores. They can also change their reproduction, uh, changes in reproduction timings as well. For example, seeds can lay dormant for many years until the conditions are correct for growth. So in terms of tackling exam questions on plant adaptations, it's very similar to my previous uh, advice with animal adaptations. And it, it is the fact that you will probably be given a plant 
you've not really looked at before or you've never heard of before. And in, in an exam question, you will always be given information about the organism. So look at where it lives, the environment, and think what adaptations give it an advantage to survive. Another top tip from me is usually they give you plants that are live in hot conditions. OK, so they tend to be things like cacti or related to cacti. So they're going to have to conserve water. Um, and also um, other plants, for example, that you might find in grasslands. So, for example, dandelions and other types of grasses. Whatever they show you, though, they will give you lots of information that you can use in your answer. So let's have a look at a few exam questions. OK, here's the first type of question you might come up with and here is again the stone plant lithops and it tells you it's adapted to living in very dry deserts and it shows you that they've got uh, swollen leaves of one stone plant well the reason they're swollen is because they're full of water and it tells you they have many adaptations and then they give you a list so it asks you to draw one line from each adaptation um, so from the adaptation here to how the adaptation helps survival. So only one line from this one to this one. I'd like you to have a read of them, have a look at them and think which could be the correct answer. Please do pause at this point. OK, so here are the answers. Now, the first thing I want you to think about is uh, hopefully you got them right, but it's just a matter of going through the list. So, for example, the first one, it says plants look like stones. Well, can trap a lot of light. It's got nothing to do with looking like a stone. Absorbs water from deep in the ground. Well, that's not about looking like a stone. Helps cross-pollination. Nope. Reduce, uh, are not easy to see and so are not eaten. Ah, OK. So if it looks like a stone, it's going to be camouflaged. So that must be the correct answer. And it's a matter of deduction. I mean, if you can't get the answer, then take a uh, a guess. And probably what I would do is is just answer the ones you can, and then you'll have um, two or three that might be free, and then just go through and use your common sense. This next question is a bit harder, and it's about coconut palms. And it tells you that they grow just above the tide line on beaches of tropical islands. They then give you lots of information of a section through a coconut fruit. And you can see that uh, they've got, obviously, coconut milk in the middle. They've got an embryo or baby plant. They've got a shell, so that's going to be hard. They've got a waxy layer. Um, and then fibres or with large air spaces in between them. OK, and then white coconut flesh, which is a large food store. Now, as it says in the question, the, the coconut palms grow just above the tide line. So therefore, the coconuts are going to fall down and they're going to fall into the sea and then probably spend a period of time drifting on the sea currents to other beaches. So we read the uh, stem of the question. So this is the stem. And it says the sea carries the fruit to new parts of the beach. And that's something I just worked out. And it says the embryo then puts out its first root. Fresh water and nutrients are very deep down under the sandy beach. So it says explain three ways in which the coconut palm is adapted so that its embryo plants can spread and survive. So again, I'd like you to pause and uh, get a pen and piece of paper and write down some answers. So for all your answers, you can use the information that they give you. So for example, I'll give you the first um, answer and it's related to the fact that trees hang over the sea. So they're hanging over the sea. Um, and why is that an advantage? Well, the coconuts drop into the sea. It's important to state you can't just say they then spread. You've got to say that they drop into the sea and therefore carried off by the currents of the sea. 
Another answer is about the waxy layers or the fibers. Okay, so you've got wax layers and fibers and they have air spaces. Well, if it's going to drop into the sea, then it's going to stop the coconut from sinking. Once the coconut is on the side of the beach, then it's going to need a source of water. Well, luckily, the coconut contains lots of water, so it has a water store. So it supplies enough water to the developing embryo until the root reaches a supply of water. It also has a nutrient store. It's got a large food store, and that will supply nutrients until the root reaches a supply of water. And the last thing is the shell. So the outside shell here and the inside part of the shell is very hard, so it protects it from breakage on landing or it protects the embryo when it's growing downwards into the sand. It protects it from, um, the, uh, from feeding animals. Okay, so here is the mark scheme. Um, i probably pause it and have a look through the mark scheme. So hopefully you can see that obviously you know very little about coconuts and how the developing embryos may uh, grow, but it's just using again a bit of common sense and using the information that they've given you and trying to explain why that gives the coconut an advantage in terms of growing a new embryo, a new plant. So next question, and it says dandelions have become adapted to live in lawns and grass areas where animals graze. And it says goose grass, however, has become adapted to live alongside hedgerows and cannot survive being mown. So they've given you important, important information there that it can't survive. So this one doesn't survive where the grass is being cut, basically. And the question says, use the information in the drawings to suggest one advantage of each of the following adaptations. So they actually give you the adaptations, but you've got to say one advantage for each. Again, I'd like you to pause and write down your answers. OK, so uh, looking at the answers. So the first one, the dandelion leaves lie flat on the ground. Well, that will give it an advantage because it won't be damaged by the mower. So it will go under the mower. OK, so that's the first answer. Uh, secondly, a dandelion has a thick tapered root. So there can be many answers for this. Um, a thick tapered root basically means that it will mean that it uh, gives it good anchorage in the soil. So it's hard to pull up or it could reach down further than the grass in terms of getting to water. Um, it could be a store of food because it's quite thick, um, or it can force its way through the grass roots um, in terms of out-competing grass roots. So as you can see, there's many different answers there. Thirdly, goose grass stems are long. Well, the reason they're long in hedgerows is to reach more light. Um, that's the main competition aspect because they're competing against other plants. It could also to let seeds be caught on animals coats as you can see in the diagram you can see that they've got seeds that are going to be um, on longer bits of the leaves um, and also it could mean that they would uh, be seen more clearly by pollinators such as bees. It then discusses goosegrass roots are thin and very long. Well, they're going to be thin and very long because they're going to increase the surface area. Um, they're going to uh, allow the roots to find water. So obviously I'm going through quite a few adaptations there, but you would only need one advantage. So I'll show you the mark scheme. So when looking at the mark scheme, remember you only need one advantage. You don't need to be writing everything that is down there. So you only just need one point. So one point equals one mark. Sometimes they'll give you uh, questions where they won't just talk about plant adaptations. They might actually include other parts of other topics. This particular question 
was in a question related to genetics. So the genetics of creosote bushes, I've not included that part in this question, but just to um, remind you that they can ask you, um, they don't just ask you on one topic, there might be several different topics um, related to the question. Anyway, so it says animals and plants are adapted in different ways in order to survive. So plants may have to compete with other plants. It says name two things for which plants compete. So that's really about photosynthesis. Then the next question, it says the drawing shows a creosote bush. So again, you don't need to know anything about a creosote bush because it gives you some information. And it, and it tells you this bush lives in a desert, means it's very dry. Um, the creosote bush produces a poison that kills the roots of other plants. So it's obviously got some form of poisons to outcompete other plants to ensure they get the water. And then how does this poison help the creosote bush to survive in the desert? So again, I'd like you to pause and have a go at these questions. So first question about plant competition. Will they compete for light, water, space and nutrients? You only need two of those for two marks, okay? Um, notice it says ignore oxygen because they're not competing for oxygen because they're, pho they're photosynthesizing. Um, and they're not competing for food or sun or carbon dioxide because those levels will remain, the carbon dioxide levels remain stable. Or the reason they're not competing for food is they're making their own food and the sun, well, they're not competing for the sun, they're competing for the light that is released by the sun. And then the second question, um, so why do roots produce poisons, well it reduces competition for water or um, it means that more water and nutrients or minerals are available to the plant. So that brings us to the end of this video on plant adaptations. Uh, please do subscribe if you haven't already. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. There'll be more videos coming shortly on this section of ecology um, and I will see you soon.